thank y'all for coming. My name is Niha Lam, and I am the industry director for BMES. My name is Arwa Zakaria, and I'm in the industry um, committee for BMES. And my name is Akila Srinivas, and I'm also in the industry committee for BMES. All right, and so looks like y'all are here because we're having a career fair later this year, um, November 4th from 12 to 4. And if you guys don't know, um, it's going to, we're trying to make it in the, do you guys know where the access auditorium is? Or uh, access atrium is? Like the big atrium and the fourth floor of um, ECSW? There. So that's where it's going to be. So please feel free to come on out, practice your networking skills, practice your resume skills. All right. Okay, I'll get started. Yeah. All right. So we're going to be first talking, this will be split two parts, master resume and portfolios. Right. So first, what is a master resume? It's a document that lists all your skills and experience. So basically everything that you've ever done when it comes to like your jobs, your skills, um, anything that you've learned, anything that you can basically market to employers just in one giant resume. It's not something that you're going to give to other employers. It's just something for yourself so that you can make it a little bit easier to tailor for other companies. Yeah. Um, why would you want to tailor to other companies instead of just doing one resume that you want to send to every single one, like the same one? Well, you first want to decrease the possibility of listing something that the position doesn't list. So, for example, if you had like um, like a software engineering position, you don't want to put SolidWorks on there because they're not really going to care about SolidWorks. That's not in their job, job description. So you want to put something like the kind of languages that you know and that kind of thing. All right, and it also shows that you read and understood the description of the position. It shows that you like took the time to read the description and that you're not just taking your resume and just clicking submit, submit, submit. You're actually taking the time and like looking into all the companies, what they want from you and actually tailoring it and taking the time to put everything into each resume. And then it makes it easier on the recruiter, right? So usually whenever recruiters look at resumes, they only take like a couple of seconds on each resume. So they don't have a lot of time. Hi, Dr. Porter. They don't have a lot of time to actually read every single thing that you're going through. So it's going to be a lot easier if you just like decrease all the fluff and just make it to the point exactly what they want so they can give you your feedback and you don't waste any time. Right. So. What goes into a master resume? I was thinking if you guys wanted to say some stuff that go on the resume, we can put on the board. Does anyone want to suggest something? No. Okay. So I'll put. Excuse my terrible handwriting. Anything else? Okay. I always put that under education. All right. Anything else? All right, we'll stop there then. All right. So this is typically what you want to put on a resume, on your master resume. So first, a short description of who you are. So that would be like a summary of qualifications and skills that you have. And of course, on your master resume, you'd want to make like kind of a big summary so that you can cherry pick what you want for like each position for a resume for future positions. Um, you want to do your experiences and you want to start with active words. For example, um, let's say I was a research lab assistant, right? I can put like as a header research lab assistant, but I want to use an active word like um, I created an algorithm to sort data collected by the other lab members and stuff like that, like created, organized, um, supplemented, stuff like that. So that'd be your active word. And then um, try to break it down in like all the roles that you used when it came to this position or like um, all the skills that you used as well, like stuff that you did instead of just I was this, right? Education, degree, GPA, that's a given. Typically, when G you do GPA, if your GPA is like lower and you 
don't want to put that on your resume, you usually would want to try to supplement that with more experience and the kind of skills you have so that it can like kind of balance it out. Um, then you'd have the classes that apply to the position. Of course, you want to put like all the different classes that you have, but you don't want to put stuff like government, right? For a STEM position. If you're looking for STEM related jobs, you don't want to put government, right? Because no one's going to really look at that. And same thing with like calculus too. Um, you want to put something more specialized, like for example, if you're doing reliability, right? And you wanted to get into a reliability position, you'd put probability and statistics because that's used a lot in reliability. All right, you want to put some hard and soft skills. So hard skills are skills that you learn, right? So if you learn another language, um, if you learn how to use a program, that's your hard skills. And then soft skills are more what you would like, what's kind of natural to you. So like if you're an effective communicator or um, if you're really organized or if you're resourceful, those would be more soft skills. And then you want to put club memberships and leadership roles. And for leadership roles, you can also put um, what you did in those specific leadership roles, kind of like experience, like, oh, I organized this event or I present, I presented this, stuff like that. Um, projects, we're going to get into this more later when we go to the portfolio section, but you just want to put like the most relevant projects that you have for the position. I mean, not, the re not for the master resume, for the normal resume, but like, for the master resume, you kind of just want to list everything out so you have stuff that you can cherry pick from. Um, and then other relevant information like citizenship, licenses, awards. And then you want to try to avoid using anything from high school. If you're a freshman, it makes sense. I understand that you want to use high school things because that's all you have at that point. But usually whenever you start college, that's when your career starts, you know? And so a lot of people would kind of consider college onward like your professional career start and so that's what they would be looking at most if you have like research that you did or an internship that you did during um, high school that's fine but if you're like um the president of the robotics club in your high school i wouldn't put that so what goes on a resume from a master resume so resumes used for different job applications usually vary, um, and this is because different job applications require different qualifications and skills, right? So you want your resumes for each different job application you apply for to be more personalized and specialized for that job. So depending on that job, you want to selectively choose the experiences you want to highlight. And this basically means, as we covered before, tailoring your resume for the position you are applying for. So specifically, this means pay attention to the skills and qualifications listed by the company. Usually in their job descriptions and their job postings, they describe what, what actual, actual hard and soft skills that they're requiring from all of their um, applicants and what they would want to see in their future interns or future full-time positions. And this is something you want to pay attention to and cater to your specific resume. So it highlights that you are a good fit for the position you are applying for. And this this means focusing on including only the relevant experiences with these specific skills for the particular position you are applying for. So, for example, if you're applying for an intern position that's kind of heavy in computer science or heavy in coding, you want to list experiences that you have coded in or uh, languages that you're familiar with. Instead of focusing on experiences that might be not exactly related to that position, just because it highlights that you are a better fit for the job and then they can pay attention on your um, and hone in on your skills. And this also means for tailoring your resume is matching skills and keywords from the job posting in your descriptions. And why this is important is because, again, you're specializing your resume so that when you submit your resumes along with probably like a thousand, two thousand other applicants, you're not just hitting submit and you're not just getting your resume um, automatically filtered out by their automatic systems. Most job applications usually have like a filtering system through your resumes. And if your resume doesn't really include specific keywords or specific qualifications that the job is looking for, usually gets thrown out or filtered out pretty easily. So to avoid that, you want to cater to what they're actually asking you in their job posting. And this kind of ensures that you get kind of like a higher incentive, higher advantage over other applicants um, when you're all applying for the same position. And overall, why is a master resume beneficial? 
So a master resume helps consolidate all of your experiences and keep in mind the master resume is more of like a personal like note to yourself kind of resume. It doesn't need to be um, completely specialized and personalized yet. It just has everything you've done, um, relevant work experiences, um, your education and just things you've done throughout your career that you can consolidate all into one document. And this just helps you kind of keep track of all of your past experiences. You can easily find all of your past experiences with the specific qualifications to tailor your resume for different positions. Um, as you like gain more experiences, gain more um, leadership positions, club positions, work um, opportunities, internships, on-campus jobs, all those type of things, you can kind of easily lose track of all your experiences. And a master resume helps consolidate all of that into one document, so you, have, you always have a reference to look at. And it's, again, a simple way to keep track of all your job titles, dates, and details. These, can, these things can get like missed easily um, when you're applying to multiple different internship positions or job positions, and you want to be able to kind of refer back to what all of your experiences stem from. And it also helps rec you recognize the work you are drawn to. So what I mean by that is if you kind of notice like a pattern in the specific jobs you apply for and work at, um, specific internships, maybe it's like the same um type of same type of internship or same type of um place you're working at uh the same work you're doing you can recognize that there's a pattern in what you want to do in your field and this can help you recognize patterns with your in your careers and maybe have you stray away from them if you kind of realize you want to go for a more different route or stick to the work that you're drawn to because you you like doing that work so it kind of gives you more of an insight on um the work you're drawn to and the work you've been doing over the past your career. And so for in, for the master resume, it, it does give you insight on um, skills and qualifications you may need more experience with. If you see that you're kind of lacking in some sort of qualifications or certifications or coding languages, you can easily look at your ras master resume and see that maybe you need more experience with Java or maybe more experience with Python. And that could be a great way to see what kind of jobs and what kind of skills you can move forward with. So Dr. Porter graciously volunteered his master resume. And so <laughs> please don't judge him. He's great. Um, we didn't want to put all of it because he has a lot of pages because he's that cool. And so we put only a couple of pages because yeah. Um, so as you can see, let's see. OK, you can see my mouse. OK, cool. Um, as you can see for these, he used um, words like organized, for his experience, he used words like organize, design, taught, these active words that we were talking about earlier. So say like what he specifically did instead of what he was, you know? And then in here, he also has like his summary, which he has like multiple different things that he's done. And then later he can take which bullet points he wants to use, which um, sentences he wants to use and that kind of thing. And then he has his awards down here and education. So usually with the master resume, you want to use the same layout that you're going to use in your actual resume. So it's a lot easier to just copy and paste instead of just like having to write everything again for each one. OK, so portfolios, what is a portfolio? Has anyone heard of portfolios before? Um, what do you know about them? Anyone? Yes. So a portfolio is a collection of um, uh, any projects, experience, or work that you have done in the past. Um, it showcases your soft soft skills and most importantly your technical skills that you have gained from working on these projects. Um, and the information that you put on your portfolio. Um, can greatly reflect all your abilities, and it's a great tool um, for you to market yourself for employers. Um, a lot of times we put in projects that have, we have worked on on our resumes, but since our resumes are only like one page, um, we don't have enough space to to write details about what we worked on, what we gained from that experience, especially when working on projects or research. And so portfolio was a really nice way to have that um, for your employers to look at and read uh, what skills you have. And so um, these are some examples uh, of things that you can do and put on your portfolio. So 
um, UT design epics. If you worked on a project, you can write about it in your portfolio, senior design. Um, and we also, for the newer degree plan, we have our junior design class. Um, and then any engineering projects, any internship or co-op um, experience, and then also any re research projects or working in a lab, for example. Um, so has do you guys have anything right now that you 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 can think of and put on uh, your portfolio. Any experience, any project? It could be like I printed this pot, stuff like that. I like plants, so I printed a pot for the plant to show you like, oh, I did 3D printing. Like personal projects are included too. Yes. So what kind of personal projects can you think of that you would want to, that you could possibly do to enhance your portfolio? Whatever area of bioengineering you're interested in, whether it be programming or 3D printing or biomechanics, whatever, right? Think of a few examples. What can you possibly do now to enhance your portfolio on your own? I'm not moving forward until we get three answers. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. In my high school, we had to do like a senior year uh, seminar, um, like because it was an engineering school, so it was like an engineering uh, like a project that we had to do, and we had to build a prototype and everything. And I made a, like a UV disinfection system thing. That's one. Yeah, that's one. Like a little bit about 3D printing because I was trying to find a lot of models that didn't exist, so I went and created. Yeah. You're doing 3D printing your own part for car. Have any of y'all taken Beam and Total Wave? You have? Um, did you do it in person? Um, it's software, so yeah. Okay. Um, did you all guys have to do the robot arm? Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you do the robot arm? Yeah. You can use that. You can put like your Arduino and then I think you have to 3D print parts for that too. Yes. Yeah. So you can do that too? Yeah, that doesn't count. Just hang on. What if you're trying to develop a portfolio to show that you can pub speak publicly? What's that? So that you can speak publicly? Yeah, demonstrating. I mean, portfolios can have a lot of sorts of stuff yeah. in it, right? So what if you're trying to go for public speaking? Showing that you're comfortable in front of a crowd. Leadership roles, do you have any like to be? If you were trying to set yourself up for an experience that you could then show off and say, hey, look, I can communicate. Like I can talk in front of a group of people. I'm okay with it. Right? Yeah. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> right? They all now have something they can add to the portfolio. Think broadly. I'll give this to you. All right, that's the end of our um, presentation. Does anyone have any questions? All right, and then please take the quick survey at the end. I Before think you go, we're going to keep working a little bit more, though. Yes. So that was the talking part. Um, so thank you very much to our presenters. I would like to brainstorm a little bit more with y'all. Um, they can continue doing this, they can keep it going. Um, Should we keep the recording? Ended? You can keep the recording. I'll come over here so they okay. can hear. Um, all right, so what we're going to do now is brainstorm a little bit more on when you're coming up with your master resume, you are trying to put everything onto it that you can think of. Right? Um, Anything that might be useful to use in the future that just can help to demonstrate different things, right? So you listed job experience in college education. So let's keep using those, all right? Let's say you're trying to give examples of leadership. Okay, so leadership examples. Okay, from being a student, as your current role as a student, what are some leadership examples you can come up with? Things that you're doing now. Leading a team project. 
Horas. Okay. Starting the club. Okay, what was the other one? Being a member. Probably not for leadership. So if you were to take a leadership role in it, though, if you were going to be a chair of something or other, um, so either be a chair or even be a president of a club. What else? Yes. Like teaching assistant. Teaching assistant. I think would definitely count. Yes. Yes, mentoring undergraduates, not just undergraduates, mentoring other people, period, right? So that can be undergraduates if you're a graduate. Um, it could be first year mentor. Right, actually, that opens up a whole new can of worms. I don't even get that phrase. What is a can of worms? Anyways, it opens up a whole new thing because you get into all like the PLCL, PLCL, PCLC, P PLC, PLC, PLC. P yeah, PLC. <laughs> Peer-led training, right? PLTL, peer, tutor. uh, peer tutoring, all that, right? All that shows leadership, especially those ones that focus on groups. Okay, what else? What about in fun life? Sports, I'm just gonna put, yeah, we'll just put sports ball. So it's probably not something that I would necessarily put on my resume, but it's something that I would bring up during an interview. When I was in college, I had a group of friends and I would always organize group dinners where everybody brings something and we all cook it together, but that is that is organization, that is leadership because we had a group of like 20 people. So it's like divvying up the tasks, saying you do this, you do this and all that. So when you're when you're reaching for examples, master resume is also just a good place to keep sort track of that sort of stuff that you can refer back to. And when you're prepping for interviews and looking at all those hard interview questions, you can pull up experiences on. Okay, that one's a very human experience. That one's one that people can connect with, which is good. You don't want, wouldn't necessarily put it on your pep paper resume, but you could put it in that interview. Right. Um, I'm just gonna put organizing social things. All right, anything else for organization or for leadership? Caretaker, yeah. In what way? Old people. <laughs> OK, um, actually, I'm not sure for leadership, but I think that is an experience that you can go with other things on. Right. Unless can, can you give an example of leadership and caretaking? Uh, I guess give an example of demonstrating how that is leadership. Because that's the big thing, right? You can put anything on there as long as you can explain why it is. It's just impossible. <laughs> I do not envy daycare workers. Anyways, uh, yeah, so as long as you can demonstrate the leadership part, right? So put a demonstration. And yes, organizing a bunch of uh, kids is most definitely a challenge in leadership. Demonstration. Okay. I think I had one more. I just completely lost it, which is typical for me. Was there anything else you all had? Yes. I think along those lines, maybe like camp counselor or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Camp counselor. Yep. Volunteering in general. That was the other one I was trying to come up with. Right. Your volunteering experiences usually. Depending on what role you have in the volunteering experience, it can be definitely organizing people, trying to get them to come together. Um, if you are the member of your student club, even if you're not a chair, if you're leading up a volunteering experience, trying to get that going, that is leadership. Okay. All right. Let's. Oh man, you died. Oh. 
There's a couple other topics I was going to go for here. Now I can't even get my password right. Fine. <laughs> All right, what about, uh, let's say, problem solving? Oh, no, no, leadership. Let's go back to leadership in the workplace. Um, but let's do let's do an unrelated workplace, OK? So that was all as a student. Let's say you're working. I don't know, does anybody have a job? Where do you work? What do you do in the union? What does that mean? Uh, I take care of like the rentals and I set up the events that happen. Like OK, good. So you're an attendant. You take care of the rentals. You set up events. All right, give us some examples of leadership that you do. Go. <laughs> Often, since I do a lot of the, like, for my teams, usually make me, like, take care of the heavy work. So I usually come up with the plans to, like, I guess, put the events together efficiently. Okay, so coming up with the agenda, with the plan. Agenda or plan. What else? Or do you want us to move on to somebody else? <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> okay, I bet there's more, but that's okay. What uh, what else? Does anybody else have a job? What do you do? What do you do? A nanny. Okay. Let's go back to our caretaker. So it's a uh, nanny, I suppose. I don't know what to say. Okay, what do you, as a nanny, how do you show leadership? Okay, so directly being in charge of another human being. What else? You can also say taking responsibility. Huh? I could have said that shorter. <laughs> Okay, taking direct responsibility. There we go. What else? I know, still on the nanny. We'll come back to cashier. Actually, this would go for the attendee too. What about you have to negotiate with your customer? You have to talk to the parent. You have to talk to the people who are trying to reserve stuff. So that is customer service, but there is a leadership element in that too, right? So even we'll just say coordinating. You can come up with better words as you go, but coordinating with parent or customer or fill in blank. Okay, now you said cashier. What do you got there? Um, other cashiers during Black Friday, or coordinating sales business. Okay, good. So coordinated other cashiers during Black Friday, which sounds incredibly painful. All right. All right. What else? Or do you guys want to move on to the next one? Next topic. Next. Next thing, overall category. OK, let's move on. <laughs> so those are some ideas on leadership. So you can kind of see what you're trying to dig up here. Uh, let's move on to problem solving. So I will say the master resume can be a lot more useful when it comes to doing the soft skills. Um, it's definitely useful on the when you're listing the hard skills, like I've engineered this or this or this. Um, but it's definitely good for helping to demonstrate those soft skills when you need to pull them up. OK, so let's go with multi. No, I didn't say multitask, I said problem solving. OK, as a student, problem solving. <laughs> Time management. Related to that, prioritization. Is that even a word? I think that's a word. Okay, good. <laughs> you have assignments, classes, tests, and long term assignments that you're coordinating with. 
Uh, you have student clubs or organizations that you might be a member of. Uh, so you might have a job at the same time that you're also trying to coordinate. What else might you be trying to coordinate as a student with all your other family friends? Family friend, no. Yeah. <laughs> family and friends. Okay, but prioritization and time management, most definitely, right? Comes with the problem solving. Okay. What else? Projects with organizations or yourself. Uh, give me an example or self. OK, give me an example of a project that you would do for yourself that demonstrates problem solving. What is a problem you have solved? I didn't have a pot that I like for my plant, so I 3D printed a pot. OK, 3D printed a pot. That is cool. Okay, I had a problem. I didn't like the solution that was given, so I made one. Right, I can go for a lot of different things. Right, we just remodeled my house. We put in a closet ourselves because we didn't like that there wasn't one. Okay, um, I, I didn't. My spouse did because she's a lot better than I am with that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, most definitely, when it comes to these self projects that can help to demonstrate that. Right, I. Notice there wasn't an organization that covered this specific topic of underwater basket weaving, so I created one. Right. Um, how else can you demonstrate problem solving? Yes. Yes, learning new skills for a project. Why else is that a good one to list? What's that? You can list the skills, which is definitely good. This shows another good soft skill. Self OK, it shows a couple of really good soft skills. <laughs> Ability to learn also shows initiative. Right? People love it when you show initiative. They want to know that you can go get things done on your own. Right? Um, that could be another topic we could go into all on our own, but yes. OK, learning skills for a project um, and determining the skills what you need. That is part of problem solving is figuring out what you need. Okay. All right, what about problem solving on your jobs? In your jobs? <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> it can't be solved. Let's hear from our graduate students. What do you do problem solving on a daily basis? <laughs> Troubleshooting experiments, absolutely. And experimental setups. The number of times you had to figure out why it's not working because this wire was loose, right? That sort of thing. Okay. Well, what else? Like that. Knowing who to ask. That applies to all jobs. That's good. What's that? Related to that, collaborating with. Other people so that you can learn something. OK, so problem solving as a group, that would be collaboration. Or figuring out who to collaborate with. Finding the right people. OK. Open it up to everybody. What else? Problem solving on the job. PhD, it's like all you do is problem solving. It's like, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to go look it up. We don't have the budget for this. I got to figure out how to make it work. Right. Um, actually, we'll just keep picking on the PhD for now because it's an easy one for me. So uh, as a PhD student, you're usually organizing undergraduate students. Right? You usually have a group that is working for you. So problem solving is definitely in scheduling. Right? Trying to figure out how schedules work. Um, so scheduling for other people.
right? Anytime that you're trying to meet the needs of a group of people and make everybody happy, you're problem solving. Problem solving can also be purchasing. Like if you're trying to figure out a piece of equipment in a lab that you have to buy, figuring out what exactly goes into it because you have to really consider it, figure out the needs. I mean, that's what problem solving is, right? Is analyzing the problem, figuring out how to solve it. So figuring out what you need and then getting it would be by part of it. So purchasing can be. Okay. Um, yeah. My computer is working. That's how, we, how are we doing on time? Okay. Okay. What other soft skills do you want to pick on? Conflict right. Ooh. Oh yeah. Going straight for the heart. What is that supposed to mean? Conflict resolution. What is the worst possible answer you can give during an interview if somebody asks you, have you ever had a conflict with somebody? No, no of course you have. All right, so as a student, what conflict resolution have you had to do? Group projects. Now, conflict resolution is one of those tricky ones when you're writing descriptions on because you don't want to sound like you're trying to blame somebody else. Right, you don't want to sound like you're putting everything on this other person who is being a jerk. OK, you have to word it in a way that you're being positive. So be tricky when it comes to conflict resolution or anything else like that, that you're wording it in a positive manner, not just trying to blame on somebody else. OK, uh, okay. group projects, what else? Are dealing with roommates. Oh, roommates. <laughs> Actually, let's break down group projects a little bit. Roommates is definitely good, but what what ways do you have conflict resolution in group projects? What kind of conflicts come up? Yeah. OK, so. Um, um, I'm trying to think of a single word for that, and I just totally lost it. Splitting work, sharing work, yeah. splitting work. OK, there's a better word for that that I can't think of. What's that? Uh, OK, yeah. All right, splitting work, what else? Yes, differing ideas. What else? Yes. Time conflicts. Yeah, conflict resolution doesn't just mean that you have to that you're like fighting, physically fighting with each other. There's all different types of conflict, right? What else? Splitting work. Splitting work. So I would actually divide that up in two different ways because splitting work can be how you actually assign the work, but then you're talking about the person putting in the effort, yeah. right? Um, so, so there's just level of effort. But that's one you can definitely address. The other thing is when you list these, don't just list what could go wrong. List how you addressed it. Right. How did you actually fix it? How did you address the level of effort being wrong? That sort of stuff. OK, uh, what else can go with group projects on conflict resolution? There's a lot. OK, so how do people respond? Um, crisis management, I don't know what the right. Yeah. We'll go with crisis management, although that might be more extreme than we're thinking. <laughs> about communication you prefer email i prefer text that sort of thing right so resolving just even how you basically communicate with people big one i haven't noticed personality right that person's so type a i'm so type b get off my back personality can definitely be a hard one to navigate All right, so group projects, you have a plethora to pick from there. Uh, what else for conflict resolution can you go for as a student? Who else do you have conflicts with? Yeah, I have conflicts with students, that's for sure. <laughs> Not giving any names. No. <laughs> 
All right, so what kind of conflicts can you have with your professor? Grade changes. Do you know the key thing with grade changes? When you're trying, so go, going for the resume, if you're trying to list how you had to resolve or give an example of a time that you had to resolve a grade change issue, what is the key thing that you want to emphasize? Okay, there's multiple key things, but yes, take an initiative for sure. How do you get a successful grade change? Immediately is good. Something else very important. You have to prove why. You have to show that you were right. <laughs> okay. And you have to show that you were right, not in a bitchy way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes, including professors. So it definitely comes down to saying, hey, I think there was a mistake here. Let's talk it out. So being able to back up your claim. Okay. Uh, being able to give that example of why this didn't work or something like that. And that's definitely a key for me on how you get your grade changed. Don't just tell me you want your grade changed because you were confused on the question or because you don't think it's. You just got it wrrong and you want points or something right give a reason okay it always comes down to giving a reason. okay what other conflicts can you have with professors deadlines negotiating deadlines yeah did you have one good okay uh so getting clarification <laughs> I had one as an undergraduate as my chemistry teacher. I talk about this all the time. He was Russian with a very thick accent and he stuttered. And I could not understand anything and there was no way clarifying it would help. So it was always going to the TA for help in that one. But yeah, it can be a, that's a hard one. What's that? Another one? What if they just don't like you? Right? That's definitely a conflict you have to resolve. So it can be biased. Let me just put bias down. We can't even expand this to say conflict resolution and tough conversations. The ability is to have a, a hard conversation is that's a good skill. OK, so what other hard conversations or conflict resolutions could you have with your fact, professor? Extension can be one. Explaining why you flaked out for the past month in a way that they actually want to give you another chance. Right? Taking life's challenges and turning them into something good is good. So when things like that pop up, it's not that it's going to necessarily be a negative for the rest of your life. It's figure out how to make it a learning experience and showing that. So anytime you can show that you've had a learning experience through conflict resolution is good. We'll just say dealing with life. Because life happens. Okay. Uh, what other tough conversations might you have to have? Yeah. I think it was too talky, but it's one. Being there. Okay. Um, so working through group projects with your faculty member, right? Something along those lines. Okay. Well, I'm also going to put down recommendations. Which might not necessarily be a conflict, but I know it can be intimidating. Recommendations, working in the lab. It's a good story, something that you can pull up for an interview. OK. All right, uh, that's all for student. What about conflict resolution for a job? A lot of this translates over, right? What other conflict resolution might you have to do with the job? Customers, right? Oh man, customers. Customer service is an art. It's an important one, though. Good customer service is uh, it, you can you recognize when people have good customer service skills. It's all those abilities to deal with those tough customers. So, so. 
customers. Okay. Um, not just customers, but irate customers. Complicated customers. <laughs> Frustrated customers, so customers who have been bounced around and passed back and forth between people because nobody else has good customer service skills. Dealing with that. Is fantastic. Frustrated customers. Think about it when you're trying to go to your economic advisor and they don't respond to you for a month and you finally get hold of somebody who will respond. How happy are you with that person who responded, right? OK. Uh, what other conflict resolution might you have in the job? Uh, like isn't really a job, but as a flood pro uh, or flood project in like in high school was we were trying to make like a cistern and hydroponic system for like sustainability. Uh, but then like this problems with the vendors, the bureaucracy and trying to make everything. We got it funded, but I don't think it's been built and this is two years ago we got the funding. Vendors, contractors, all sorts of stuff there. All right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We could dive into that one. Yeah. Yes. That is a tough conversation. Asking for a raise, asking for a promotion, asking for anything. Good. OK, uh, we're almost out of time. Are there any other soft skill topics you want to cover? Or brainstorm on? Okay. All right. Leading into this, look at job descriptions now. Figure out what's important. As you figure out what's important, make your different topics on your master resume and things that you want to pull from, right? And it, it's it, the way it was structured. You can have it broken down by job is good. You can have it structured in multiple ways. So you can also have it saying, oh, I need to demonstrate this soft skill or something like that. So you make a list of those soft skills experiences. It can be however you want to structure that's useful for you. Um, but go through now, look at resume or look at job descriptions, that sort of thing. Just take some notes and start building out your master resume to meet those as you go and then also start brainstorming. What can I do in the future to build out my master resume? OK, any questions over anything? Yes, so if you don't have that many uh, hard skills, what would you need to do in the future to like help with that? Is it hard skills is in like just hands on stuff? Mm -hmm. So develop them. Yeah, yes. <laughs> like besides like code, like in, in the realm of uh, bioengineering. Yeah. Is it something? Like other than coding, so it depends on which hard skills you're trying to approach. So coding, that's one of those easier ones because you can go learn a language. Yeah, right. You can go get practice doing that. Um, a lot of it does come down to finding the opportunities to do it. So going and working in a lab, even if you're not interested in research, is a great way to get that up. Yeah. those hard skills developed. Um, joining on the projects like Epics um, or even student-led group projects, that sort of thing. Um, our entrepreneurship office. They do a lot of um, weekend long hackathons. There we go, hackathons um, that address particular problems. So even if you're not necessarily getting hands on, you are approaching it, right? You're doing things that surround that. Yeah. Um, going and volunteering to work for companies, um, not even necessarily an internship, you can call it a limited internship, whatever you want, right? But say, hey, if you need help just creating this knickknack, I can help you for that you know, month or so, right? Um, so it's not like a full term internship. It's more like just I'm jumping in on a project. Um, so finding the opportunities. Yeah. OK, if you could, please do do the survey uh, to help us in the future. Our, our next one of these is October 7th. We will be talking about LinkedIn and the specific nuts and bolts of crafting resumes. So we will actually go through and practice some wordsmithing. Um, talk about some of the other experiences you had. So now that you have your master resume and all the ideas down, you want to present it well. So that's what we'll be talking about there. We will also have um, Hannah Hudgens, who is our social media person and much more for the department. She'll be there taking headshots. So if you need a headshot for LinkedIn or anything like that, come professionally dressed from at least the waist up um, and she'll be there taking photos. So, OK. Thank you for coming. Have a good weekend because it is Friday. Well done. Stop it.